On the afternoon of November 30th, 1993, Pam Tarr was home alone with her three-and-a-half-year-old son, Joshua. In her fifth month of pregnancy, Pam was excited about having a second child. But for her, the decision to do so was not without risk. My wife had a heart condition, and after she became pregnant, they had taken her off her medication. So I was concerned about her doing laundry and stuff. I didn't really want her going up and down the stairs, just wanted her to wait till I came home, but she said she would be careful. I put my super soaker away. Then I heard a big bang. Mom! I ran down the steps, and boom, she was laying on the floor. Mom, are you okay? She had her eyes closed, but she kept saying, Oh, Mom, Mom. mom. Calvert County Control Center Supervisor Becky Watham took over the call. Hello? Yes? I couldn't get her. They, she can't get on the phone. She can't get up? No. Did she fell down the steps? Yeah. Okay, does she, did she say where she hurts at? Oh, uh, no. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start an ambulance, okay? At that point, we had the address and name of the residence. We were able to start a BLS. Corporal Tommy Barrett, with the security company in the gated community where the family lives, also heard the report and headed to the scene. We have approximately 300 and some roods in here, and a lot of the houses have no house numbers. So if you're not familiar with them, you can get lost in just about any road in here. Do you know if they're mommy or daddy's house? There's Debbie and Shelly. Those are the moms. Debbie and Shelly are the moms. We were trying, hopefully, to get an adult who could assess the situation better and who could maybe help him and help the mother and, in turn, help us. Do you know what their telephone number is? Well, I, I forget what, um, telephone number. I'm going to ask my mom. What is your name? Josh. Josh? Yeah. How old are you, Josh? Three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. I was surprised that he was that young, because normally a child that young wouldn't be that articulate and think enough to make a call like he did. Okay, you're doing real good. Yeah, see if Mommy knows where Shelly or Debbie's phone number is, okay? Yeah, all right. Okay. She asked me if I knew the phone numbers, and I didn't remember the phone numbers. So I ran steps to my mom. Yeah, I 
I wasn't sure what it was that had upset him so much, but as a mother myself, I wanted to crawl through the phone and just sit there and hold him and comfort him and tell him that everything was going to be okay. Okay, you all right now? Take a couple of big, big deep breaths, okay? Can you do that? Yeah. Okay, you all calm down now? Yeah. I thought my mom was going to die. That's why I was crying. That's why she told me two deep breaths. That it made me stop crying. She's what? She's bleeding? She's sleeping? Yeah. And you couldn't get Mommy to wake up? She might be uncomfortable. That meant the call was more serious than we had originally thought. I hoped everything was going to be okay, but at that point we didn't know for sure. Hey, that helps, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes you feel better. But we got someone to come and help me, Mommy, okay? okay? Neighbor Debbie Davis, a registered nurse, had just gotten home. And I saw the security jeep pull into Pam's driveway. I immediately got scared because she had told me that over the weekend she had passed out. So that was the first thing that came into my mind, something that had happened to Pam. Hey, can you see outside from where you are? Yeah. Okay, see if you see a, a man out front. There's supposed to be a man there. Yeah. There is someone in the house now. I heard voices in the background and knew that the officer was there. But I still, I wanted to be there with him to let him know how good a job he had done. Pam? Miss Tyler? Pam, can you hear me? I could tell that she was breathing, but she wasn't responding at all. Pam? Pam? Pam, are you okay? The security guard took the phone from me, and then I had to go to the neighbor Shelly's house. Then we looked out the window, didn't see the ambulance or my mom. Neither one of them, or my dad, none of them. She's got a call since she's breathing. Knowing that she had a cardiac history, I was worried about the baby and whether or not the baby was getting enough oxygen and blood and everything, but of course I had no way to check that. Pam was flown by Maryland State Police helicopter to the neonatal intensive care unit of Prince George's Hospital Center where trauma physician Saeed Dayi took over her okay. care. The most likely cause of her fainting was lack of circulation to the brain because of her history of heart problems. Okay, pass. Plug that uh, sargram machine, please. Not only we're examining her condition, also we're monitoring and checking the baby heartbeats. I see the baby moving. The sonogram showed that though there is some evidence of a slowness, there is no immediate danger. And this is a transient process that went away fast. Okay, the youth to prevent future problems, Pam was put back on her heart medication. No bleeding behind it. During the phase Pam spent in the hospital, Joshua was a frequent visitor. Hi. I feel so happy to see my mom. I ran to her and then I gave her a great big hug. <laughs> he ran right up with a huge smile on his face, just so proud of himself. And I just said, I saved your life, Mommy. I'm your hero. I just smiled and said, of course you are. You saved Mommy and probably your baby brother. And that's when he found out it was going to be a boy. Eight pound, two ounce Jacob Tarr was born 16 weeks after the incident a completely healthy baby. Joshua came through when there was no other person to rely on. It makes me look at him as a little boy and not a baby anymore. It's obvious that he's growing up. We proudly present this award in recognition of outstanding service to Joshua Tarr as our Hero of the Year for 1993-1994. I'm gonna get the Hero of the Year awards. Here you go, young man. Good job. I knew I was a hero.
Because I called my mom and said my mom is life. How big's Jacob? <gasps> so big. Yeah, I'm happy to be a big brother because I get to help my mom. Oh, baby. I'm gonna have to teach him a lot of things before he grows up. Like, let me see here, like no hitting and no pushing. And only call them one when they are in emergency. Baby on the bus.